I investigate the most Muslim place in America. Folks, my name is Tommy G, and today I'm in Dearborn, Michigan, the most Muslim place in America. So if I'm gonna tell you hello, I gotta tell you. Salam. Salam alaikum. sucks chat like nowadays when i go to the mosque people just record me and it's so weird it makes me not want to go but like they just record me from a i know they're doing it but what am i supposed to do get up there and tell them stop that you feel me like it's just it's just like it'd be throwing me off bro it'd be throwing me off man because like when i was in toronto i used to go all the time but like back then phones like back, like growing up and stuff phones were way less common so, like, the thought of, like, you pulling out your phone, it wasn't even a thing. We didn't even have phones and shit. But, like, nowadays, it's just like, bro, why are you making it uncomfortable for me, bro? Like, if you want to come up to me after the prayer and say, like, hey, agent, what up? I'm not going to be weird. Like, we'll take a photo, but don't do it mid, like, khutbah or, like, while the imam is talking. That's just weird. All that is so weird to me, bro. And I'll be seeing this shit, like, on TikTok later. Dead ass, bro. And I'm just like, that's just odd activity, bro. Ramadan Mubarak! When you drive around Dearborn, Michigan, the swirl of Arabic letters fill the air. 150,000 Arab Americans call this place home, and it has the largest mosque in the United States. This video was going to be released in Ramadan of 2024, but given the troubling events that are unfolding in the Middle East, I thought this would be a critical time to release this video. You see, we fear what we do not understand, and many Americans do not understand Islam. Is this a religion of radical behavior and action? Bro, at all, bro. Like, at all. Yo, clap it up, bro. At all, bro. They don't get it at all, bro. Yo, in Atlanta, if I go up to somebody and I'm like, yo, I'm celebrating Eid tomorrow, they're going to say, what's Eid? Which is okay to not know things, obviously, but it's just completely different from growing up. You didn't have to be a Muslim. Everybody knows what Eid is. Everybody knows what Hanukkah is. Everybody knows because we're around so many different types of people. We just know. You feel me? If I see an elephant statue in your house, I know that's Ganesh. Because I had a lot of Sri Lankan friends. Like, I know that's Ganesh, bro. Everybody has, like, 30 Ganesh statues in their house. And you learn a little bit about that. So then, but, like, people don't be knowing stuff here. So it just, it throws me off a little bit. So I don't even like talking about it, for real. Because, like, who can I really speak to it about where they will understand, you know? Terror? Or is this a religion that produces some of the most generous people on the planet? People who are kind and have conservative values. That is for you to decide. Join me as I take you to Dearborn, Michigan. The most Muslim place in America. <laughs> Dearborn is like right outside Detroit, right? So folks, we are going to the most Muslim city in America, Dearborn, Michigan. And we're here during a special time, Ramadan. The Muslims have kind of been thrown into that mix where they're a little bit misunderstood or people don't know their intentions. And to be honest, if you're not a Muslim, who's read that book? I know I haven't. So how much could you really know about them until you've studied what they do? Not a drop of water, not a bite of food. And you can only break your fast at the sundown yes. or before sun up. It's a very yes. disciplined practice that I have a lot of respect for. First, we meet our contact, Ahmad, who's going to be taking us on this beautiful journey. Stay tuned. Hello in Arabic is Salam. Salam. Salam, exactly. Short for Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum. You're a natural, let's go. I'm fluent already, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Welcome to Dearborn in Islam. Ramadan is an Islamic month. For fasting, it's one of the pillars of Islam. We have five pillars. The reason why we fast is so we can remember God's blessings, so we could think about all the blessings we have. We worship Him more during the day. And right now, like, I'm so thirsty, but God wants to test my patience. Am I going to give up? So this month really helps us it's learn patience. 29 or 31 days. This year, yes, 29 bro. days. Now, there are exceptions. If you're sick, you're not supposed to fast. If you're an elderly, you don't fast. Mm. If you're a child, you don't fast. If a girl is on her period, she doesn't fast. How old does a kid have to be? If you're traveling sometimes, you don't have to as well. It depends on the certain rules and stuff. But like if you travel, you're like far away from home and stuff like that. Need to be to make the- Once they hit puberty, mostly 13 and older. When you learn to discipline yourself to pray five times a day, you discipline yourself not to drink, you discipline yourself not to eat. There's nothing that you can't discipline yourself to do. So there's halal and haram for the food that we eat. Halal food is food that is butchered in Islamic man. 
container. So haram is anything not permissible, anything that's a sin, anything bad. Halal is, is anything acceptable, permissible, good. What are some vocabulary words I'm gonna need to learn from my What is this, is this a community center? Taqwa. Taqwa is to get to a, a level where you love God, you fear God, and you are able a to control yourself because of the extent that you have uh, appreciation after uh, the, the appreciation of Allah God mm -hmm. that by itself uh, prepare you to the rest of the year. It seems across most religions that fasting is a tool to get closer to God. Jesus was in the desert for 40 nights. Muslims have the Ramadan. Native Americans would go on a vision. Yeah, there's, a, there's a lot of people that fast. My Greek friends growing up, they have a form of fasting where they can't eat dairy. And I, I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, bro, why aren't you drinking milk, bro? Because back in the day, everybody used to drink milk. They're like, duh, we can't eat dairy during this, ah, like this, this period of time, we can't eat dairy. Like, it's very common. Also, there's like hella health benefits, too. In the woods without food, Buddha fast under a tree for okay. many years. We'll why watch that. We'll watch that later, bro. Way to speak to God, and why do we have to go hungry to be able to talk to this guy? Just try it, and you'll know the things you thought they're important. How long is it? To your life we'll watch it after. This competition we have in life, they become something minimal in your life. Was it hard to be a Muslim in America after September 11th? We went into a made-up war. I think we're all finding out after the fact that a lot of the information we had was wrong, and we got propaganda from our government, and we went in and we. Made made demons out of a lot of people that had nothing to do with anything. Let me clarify that strong statement I said about fake wars. After 9-11, we decided to invade Iraq under the pretense of Iraq having weapons of mass destruction, when there was no strong evidence of such. Bottom line, there were no weapons of mass destruction. Going into Iraq may have been the worst decision any president has made in the history of this country. That's how bad it is. Dick Cheney, before becoming vice president, was the CEO of Halliburton, one of the world's largest oil service companies. He became vice president President under George Bush. Money and when talks, our government man. decided to invade Iraq, Halliburton was awarded a seven billion nine compete contract to operate Iraqi oil wells. Perhaps a slight conflict of interest here. Conservative estimates state that 300,000 Iraqi civilians lost their life in this war. And America is 26 minutes. I will watch that right after. Straw, can you remind me? Sorry, I missed it in this war and american taxpayers footed the bill at a tune of 757 billion dollars yo chat that's why not to get political but when niggas bro when the government tells you you can't do something because it costs too much they're always lying <laughs> my nigga bro they pulled three trillion out their ass for covid they have money bro they print it it's literally right there bro they print the money man so when they tell you like Oh, we can't do shit about student loans. <laughs> Whether or not you agree, does this be paid off? They're lying. It's still a lie. That you could just say, I don't want to pay off your student loans. You feel me? <laughs> when they need to, but they be pulling money out their ass, bruh. No weapons of mass destruction were found, which led to this soldier confronting George Bush. Mr. Bush, when are you going to apologize for the million Iraqis that are dead because you lied? You lied about weapons of mass destruction. You lied about connections to 9-11. You lied about Iraq being attacked. You sent me to Iraq. You sent me to Iraq in 2003. My friends are dead. You killed people. You lied about WMD. A million Iraqis are dead because you lied. And this is just one war, not to mention the questionable war I'm my first time seeing that clip Libya and Afghanistan back to the video it was hard particularly for our sisters wow. when they wear hijab and they come out they know they're Muslims walk us through a story of discrimination in America simply because of being a Muslim I think you just go to the airport and, and experience and take a look <laughs> what is it like being a teenage Muslim girl in America the best thing ever like people are like oh like, don't you get stared at and stuff people look at me but honestly when people look at me it's like the best thing ever I'm like yeah I'm different a criticism that might people might uh -huh. have of Islam w is positivity. women are oppressed and I know we have a few women in the room do you feel you're oppressed as a, a Muslim woman no like I feel like God has certain rules for a reason for example God wants me to dress modestly for a reason it doesn't let people look at my body mostly my character I feel protected and it just makes us closer to God and it makes like you know people not not to fall in love with beauty the beauty of character to keep our minds pure is a good thing Islam promotes the preservation of the family unit very important so in a family unit it, obviously there's You're about to make me hungry have rules to play hello everybody how are you doing good. who is fasting right now
and their age, like the boys, they yeah. are not supposed to. Yeah. The people that ditch fast, what made you decide to do that challenge? Do it for God. Mm -hmm. When you turn nine years old, Aww. you have to fast, and I'm ten years old. What's happening really? tonight when the sun goes down? Can someone tell me about that? You eat like good food. <laughs> do you think doing this makes you stronger as a person? Yes. yes. What I've learned in life is that by doing tough things, you become tough yourself, and it's a tough world, so it's important to be tough. Would you guys agree with that? Yes. You know what my experience has been, Chat? Like, any time the world just, they have tried to make you afraid of people, those be the nicest people. That's what I've learned from life. Like, for example, an MMA fighter has the ability to fuck, break every bone in your body pretty instantly. When you talk to, if you ever spoke to MMA fighters, they're the kindest people. Gym bros, kindest people. Gun guys, kindest people. Like, they try so hard to paint everybody with brushes so that you're afraid to even experience an interaction with these people. A nigga said Jake Paul. <laughs> okay. I'm talking about groups of people, bro. <laughs> I, but generally speaking, like, when they do that, it's okay for you to explore, to see like gym people aren't scary. If you're doing something wrong, they'll help you out. When I go to the gym, if I'm doing, if I'm benching by myself and they see me struggling with a set, they'll rush over to support. I don't know them, but they'll just offer their support out of the generosity of their heart. You feel me? Trump supporters, uh, most of the, like, at least the, my experience in Atlanta, it has been very positive. And maybe a lot of them out here, bro. There be a lot of them out here. I don't spend significant time with them to know, like, if we got to the root of whatever. But, like, I don't know, bro. I think, like, I don't know. Life is all about experiences. Don't limit your experiences because people told you something about a group of people. I don't know. That's how I feel, at least. <laughs> what about Oklahoma? I don't know. What do they say about Oklahomans? I don't know. We'll do. Exactly. Yep. Basketball we'll people. Take your shoes and socks off. You say anwi and atawadu kurbatan ila lahi taala. Kurbatan ila ila lahi lahi taala. Taala. Take your right. I actually need to memorize that. I say it in English. And fill it with some water. And then go across your face. Start from the top and go down. Yep. Just like that. Get all as much as you can across your face. Then you take your right hand again. Put it in your left hand. And then start from your elbow and just swipe down all the way. So for those of you who don't know, like before you pray, touch a Quran, do anything that requires purity, you always have to clean yourself. So they be having these all at mosques and stuff like that. Down, just like that. And then you take your right hand again, and then you go down and you swipe all the way down. We're done with the water. So you just come like this. You take yep. from here and you go down. And you go here to up. And you are now in the spiritual state Perfect. of wudu. During the prayer, we have to prostrate on natural surfaces, not, you know, artificial carpet. So this is just mud that's been hardened. We prostrate, we prostrate on a natural surface. In another sect of Islam known as Sunni, you could believe you could pray on any surface. Yeah, that's what I believe. I could, I, you could pray on the side of a road. As long as you, if, if you know that area is filthy, then you can't pray there. But you could, you could pray wherever, as long as you know, you don't know it's filthy. I could, I could pray on a grassy field type, like it's just whatever, you could pray wherever. After you're done with prayer, what are you doing? And then we start the next prayer. So we just finished the noon prayer. Yep. So the next one is the afternoon prayer. prayer. Ramadan is a time of feasting, and to feast, a Muslim must eat their food in a religiously pure way. This butcher explains the process. I guess he doesn't do it here live, but what we can do is he said he can walk you through the process and show you what he does. I guess it's a bit better than nothing, right? Salam. Brace yourself. These butcher shops is like, if you've never seen an animal in a butchered state, if he, uh, it's a little like, oh, snap. That's how animals are made. <laughs> how animals are eaten and stuff like that. First thing, يعني, from this way. point on earth in Michigan, or in the United States in general, Mecca is going to be north. Yo, sorry, thank you for the seven months. 
What do you think happens to you when you die? First thing, when you go to the yeah. grave, you will come Malakan, two angels, two angels. angels. Yep. They will ask you, "Man Rabbak? Man Nabiyak? Ma Hu Dinak? Ma Hu Kitabak?" And if you answer those questions it's correctly, hard to answer. if you didn't do it in this life, when you he wasn't alive, it. you can't take it. This. Follow yeah. what Allah He said in the, in the Quran, you will answer. Me, Islam is really a ten months, continuation bro. of all of the divine prophets and teachings that came in the past. We're on the same path of doing same. good and belief in God yeah. that Abraham and Moses and Jesus and all of the biblical prophets had, and Islam is just that version of that for our times. That's a gift from my stir. Thank to you. you guys. Thank you. I really appreciate that guy's hospitality. Thank you, sir. Organic honey. Thank you. Welcome anytime. W -transition. Our tradition yeah. dates are, are eaten at iftar time, and they're very much eaten at Ramadan, and even other times besides Ramadan. You see, it's gonna be star, huh? more of like stuff versus food. So on the right is the Kaaba. So I think in Christianity, there's a lot of images of, or like portraits of Jesus, for example, or his family. This is an important in, one to cover. This is important, yeah. In Islam, we don't have pictures of our prophets or religious figures. Pictures of Allah Muhammad are forbidden? Forbidden, yeah. You are can't, they, is that punishable by death? I, I don't know about that. It's something that's not tolerated. Any drawings or depiction of Allah or the Prophet Muhammad is extremely taboo in the Muslim world. An example of this is when French teacher Samuel Paddy was beheaded in France after he showed his students controversial cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad in a class he was teaching about free speech. He got beheaded? There's no God but God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. It's the Arabic calligraphy that's kind of shaped. And that phrase you just said is one of the most common phrases repeated in Islam, right? Yes. I'm hungry. Yo, in Arab culture, they have this thing. We call it tehaniya. I don't know what it is, bro. It's like a solid, sugary... That's all it is. It's kind of like solid sugar. I don't know how to explain it. It's a dessert. Anytime my mom used to bring that home, bro, ate it all in one bite. Just like 50,000 calories. Just one. It tastes so good, bro. I don't know what the actual like Arab name of it is, but uh, they be having them at all the supermarkets and stuff like that, bro. I, I stay very far away from them. Very far away. With bread, I eat them with a spoon. I'm a dangerous guy, bro. Yo, Vaughn, welcome back. Five months. I hit. No, it's a lot. It's, I don't know if it's called halwa. Oh, um, I don't know, bro. We never, we never, we just call it tahiniya. Olive oil. Nah, not baklava. Big. That's different. Import, That's different. At least our families import it straight from Lebanon in these containers here. They run about something like that. You got the mini croissants, everything Arabic, Arabic. Fun big sandwich goes down here. <laughs> you gotta tear it off into pieces. Uh, a bunch of these my mom made tonight for us for iftar as well. So this is more of your fried section here. You have fried falafel, chicken, fish. Nah, I never tried Moroccan food before. We went back before. to the Airbnb to take a couple hour nap. I got dry lips, a dry mouth, a hungry stomach. I hope this table is piled high with hummus. <laughs> How are you feeling, Miguel? I feel okay. I'm not that hungry for some reason. Oh. How are you, Tommy? How are you? Oh, yeah, the menu is on. Head. Shalom, shalom. Salam alaikum. <laughs> this is falafel. So this is beef. That's chicken. Oh my chicken. god, bro. This is... Where the samosas? Fried chicken. Fried Where the samosas chicken. at? The grape leaves and they're stuffed with rice and beef. These are cabbage stuffed with... Yo, I will, bro. I'm not gonna lie, if I pull up to a table chat and I'm fasting for Ramadan and they don't have samosas, we call them sambusas, if they're not on the table, I'm walking, bro, simple. <laughs> like, that's the staple, bro. It needs to be beef samosas on the table. There's no if, ands, or what's. You mean to tell me none of the families that pulled up brought beef samosas? That's the primary snack, bro. That's, I'm, I'm walking from the table, but I gotta, cause I have to go order some now for everybody. It can, it's impossible for you to sit down without that. So hopefully I see it here, cause Otherwise, Tommy, like, you gotta, you gotta have that, bro. Hot, straight from the deep fryer, bro. You gotta have the, the best experience, my guy. Rice and beef, same concept. And these are also beef. Yeah, it's stuff. like it's like mac and cheese on Thanksgiving. If it's not there, you have you would have some questions for why it's not there. It needs to be there, bro. With beef. You'll so see it when you open it. It's pretty good. Fried... On this side is the hummus too that you're asking about. Yeah. It's right here. And that's tabbouleh, right? Yes. That's tabbouleh, that's fatush. If you heard of fatush. This is baba ghanoush, hummus. Like regardless, yeah. regardless of whether or not you African, you from the Middle East, you're from Russia, no matter what type of Muslim you are, bro, there's some boosters, they be 
every bro it's universal dog it's literally universal man you could be in india you should still like india well, that's the primary place you should most definitely be having it at they're like popularly known for it it's just like there's no way you should not have it basically and it's it's the first thing to be finished always what's with the symbology of this moon crystals go by the lunar calendar we are in the month of ramadan Ramadan is They're like empanadas. I guess. Allahumma lak rasulna wa ala rizqi wa aftarna fa taqabbal minna bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Welcome guys everybody. Yeah. Help yourself. So that was a good quick short prayer that we say before we eat and we're ready to break our fast. The first bite. Mm. Wait, is the sun down? Did everyone oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay, good. Yo, Mayora, thank you for the five gifts. <laughs> hey, I appreciate that. I always drink before you eat. You're supposed to eat a date before you break your fast, but hey, that's just Sunday. You don't have to. Yo, Mayora, thank you so much for the five gifties. I genuinely appreciate that. Let's get a W gifted in the chat. So everyone that goes on the pilgrimage gets the nickname Hajj. Typically those who go, they'll be called Hajj or Haji. And how many of you have been on the, the pilgrimage? Too young, you have to be like committed. Like how old is the average person when they go? Typically 40s, 50s, I went to age 20. You were a serious young man. I was like the youngest person there. So I imagine your family parties always go well because there's not anyone drinking too much alcohol. <laughs> so I feel like if you look at why fights start, or most of the time it's alcohol is involved. And so if you avoid alcohol, Alcohol, you avoid a lot of trouble in your life. Yeah. You did a fantastic job, so thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you. Is it true that in this community, it's really important to have a nice beard? I mean, I wouldn't uh, yeah. say it's necessarily you important, know, but like most Muslim men, you know, grow beards. Mm -hmm. Am I looked at as still like a boy because I don't have a beard? <laughs> I wouldn't really say that. Are you optimistic about your future? Do you think we're headed in a good direction or a bad direction? The fate is all in on you. Whatever you do or whatever you choose to do, it determines your fate in the later future. Get in a we gotta get this kid on a loudspeaker in Milwaukee. <laughs> What'd you say? You're happy. Yeah. yeah. The key to happiness is when you have people that you enjoy, enjoy. or people that make your life brighter. Happiness can also be fun. Those things. W kid, man. What Yo, David, thank you for the ten months. Twenty forty eight. All right, so twenty forty eight. Are you gonna run for office and and help save the country? I don't think that's where I wanna be headed. What do you wanna be when you grow up? We'll start right to left. I want to be a doctor. They're all going to say doctor, lawyer, engineer. Free. I want to be a housewife. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. My parents have scarred me. My bad. <laughs> Maybe like a surgeon. I want the finer things in life, so I'm going to be a neurosurgeon. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be either a cardiologist or an orthopedic surgeon. Oh, nice. Whoa. <laughs> Some good diversity. Yeah, that's the one you want to try first. I didn't eat tea. That hits, right? That's straight it, Boston. It like, <laughs> it like warms the whole man, you know what I mean? <laughs> Cream cheese, bread, and honey on the top. Let's see it, Tommy. Oh, no, solid eight and a half. <laughs> wow, that's up there. How we gain. 20 pounds in Dearborn, Michigan, dude. It's huge, oh my god. But as we're gonna enter the prayer room, there's Sheikh is giving a lecture in English. And we're about to listen in on what's going on. Bro, growing up when I had to go to the lectures chat, the one part I didn't like, because I had no patience as a kid, they would say everything in English. Then they would translate everything in Arabic for everyone who didn't know English. Then they would, there were so many Ethiopians there. They would translate things in our specific language. I'm like, bro, there's like probably five people here that only know that one language and don't know English, bro. Could we, could we skip it? Like we don't have to translate in 17 different languages. Cause you know, that extends the whole lecture by like 33%. <clears throat> Housewife is crazy for an eight year old. Bro, I think I think the current world has convinced everybody they need to be a worker at a job to achieve life goals. This is not true, bro. You can aspire to be whatever you want. You can work your ass off in venture capitalist firms, or you could stay at the house and handle the kids and the family. And I think there's literally nothing wrong with that. I actually think Loki is kind of like, you know what you want. 
And as you grow, you'll learn more about yourself and then you'll adjust what you think you want, you feel me? <clears throat> Rebellious, audacious with God. That was a great meal, bro. A Christian church right here. We have the biggest mosque in North America right here, and it's a good representation that we can live in harmony. I think it's the media, dude. It comes dude, back to kills Republican, us, Democrat, <laughs> Christian, Muslim, white, black. No, all in, nonsense. In Dearborn, as you can see, we literally live <laughs> side by side. Never had any problems. Have a lot Never of the same values. Issues. Core values are all there. Just be a good person. That's all it is, folks. There's a lot of crazy stuff happening in this country, Shut and up, it's time me, for man. us to band together and rise up. The people that write the narratives aren't going to be in charge much longer. We write the narrative. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. I finished. It was so easy. My, my impression of Muslims and Dearborn Mission is this. People are very... Bro, I can't believe nobody there corrected him. Just say Muslim, bro. When you say Muslim, they're going to be like, oh, snap. You grew up around a lot of Muslims. Because when you say Muslim, it sounds like you didn't grow up around a lot of Muslims. Because no Z in there. You feel me? It just... I get surprised anytime I hear someone say Muslim with an S. Hard working, people that are disciplined, people that are very generous, very educated, family motivated. Have I forgotten anything? I would say you caught it on point, man. That's the core of what we've got here. Just hard working, honest, good people is the goal Islam tries to spread. So I hope when you guys watch this and you understand, this is the majority of America here. This is what we represent. Any extremists or people who are not like this, please understand that's the minority. To me, this is an American that I'd want to raise a family next door to and have my, my kids next door too. So I've had a wonderful time. Thank you so much. It's, it's been a pleasure. pleasure. Hey, yep. we'll see you guys next week and salam. Salam. Aww. Folks, as of releasing this video, there's a lot going on in the world right now. It feels like World War III is about to happen in the Middle East. And this is the time for reasonable Muslims okay. and Jews and Christians and just people of Crazy. this world Thank to come together months. and think about ways that we can love each other and have peace. Which might sound naive to say, but I hope it's true. We'll see you guys next week. Looking for connections to Milwaukee schizophrenia, people with it, family doctors. Oh shit. That was a good video. It literally just dropped. I'll be on top of it, bruh. Hey, we be Folks, on top of it. Hope you enjoyed it. this episode. You want to watch another? W Doggo? Here. You want to subscribe? Over here. See you next week. Hey, Tommy been on a roll, bro. This was a fire video, too.